Did you know that BDSM and kink are healthy outlets for aggression, imagination, and attention? Hi, welcome to The Partition, home of kinky wellness. My name is Dana Shergel, and I am a sexual wellness instructor that dives deep into all things kinky. I'm here to show why kinky sexual wellness deserves a rightful spot within the wellness conversation. So let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome back. How are you doing today? Thankfully, I am doing a lot better than last week, and I'm finally starting to adapt to this whole nine and a half hour time change thing, which is good. But I want to jump straight into today's topic, which is going to be all about FetLife. FetLife is one of the most recognized social network platform for those looking to connect with other fetish and kinky people because it's basically a Facebook for kinky people. You can create your own profile, add details about yourself. You can add photos, write posts and stories, add friends, make pages, and leave status updates on all kinky things you get up to. FetLife is a great place if you're looking to connect with other kinky people without the fear of being outed or if you're simply looking to keep your identity to yourself. Now, this isn't to say that you can't use your real name or photos Um, But if you're a bit shy or work in a job or a community or culture where this type of information could impact you negatively, then this social platform will help you to stay connected to the kink space while helping you keep your privacy intact. Of course, if you have a tattoo or a hair color that's very noticeable, then try to stay away from that. But hey, maybe you also want a different platform for an alter ego. And that's okay if you aren't misleading someone or being unethical about it. But a little history about Fet Life is that it was actually created in Canada in 2008 by a man named John Copanis in Montreal, Quebec. And he was originally working on a website called Friends with Fetishes, but decided to launch this platform instead as a separate site. And then he switched the name to Fet Life. Currently, its headquarters is located in Vancouver as well, which I think is pretty fun. FetLife's mission is to help everyone feel comfortable with who they are sexually and has over 10 million active users worldwide. According to their website, no matter where you are in your sexual journey, FetLife has something for you. And right now, it says they have over 18,000 up-and-coming events, which include local munches, classes, and all types of play parties you can think of. FetLife is a good place to check out if you're looking for any kinky events in your area, or if you'd rather throw your own, you can do that because FetLife allows its users to create and promote their own events if you include the date, location, cost, dress code, and other various information that's relevant. However, I do believe that the location is hidden unless the participants actually confirm through an invite that they are attending. Now, again, FetLife is intended as a social platform and not a dating website. So I don't want you to go on this website thinking it is a dating website. It was created so people could find friends with similar interests and for fellow kinksters to know that they aren't alone. A quick fact about FetLife is that they say they don't sell or share your data. So when you delete your account, FetLife actually deletes your account permanently, meaning they don't hold your information like Facebook actually does. FetLife is also free to sign up. Of course, you can give a donation if you want to and you get this little badge on your profile, but the cost to sign up and create an account is absolutely free. Also, when you create an account, don't be shocked if you have to verify it with your government ID. I just had to do this. But it's to help make sure that you are who you say you are and verifying your account won't take long at all. You just have to take a picture of your ID, then take a selfie with it as well. Now, I was first introduced to FetLife in my early 20s when I first started coming out to people about my own sexual interests. And I remember the first time I created an account, the guy who showed me the website said that no profile was complete unless they took this BDSM test, which gives like a breakdown of different things you could be into, depending on how you answer a series of questions. As always, I will leave the link in the description in case you want to do the test yourself, but you can find the test at bdsmtest.org. Basically what it is, is you get asked questions and then answer them based on a scale system ranging from totally agree 
disagree, neutral, agree to totally agree. Personally, I think the questions asked are good icebreaker questions for new potential play partners. And I actually used to bring this up a lot at parties just to get some kinky conversations going on. So the quiz itself has a number of great questions and statements, but here are some of the things it asks you to agree or disagree with. And I'm going to say it and I'm going to leave a minute so you can, you know, see for yourself if you agree or disagree. So starting with the first one, it is making my partner suffer for my pleasure is one of the best things in life. Living with a group of slaves owned by me and serving me would be my ultimate life goal. Being physically restricted during sex with clothes, robes, chains, etc. is arousing. I enjoy keeping my partner as a pet, providing them with a cage, feeding them out of a bowl, and caressing them. If I could not fulfill one of my partner's sexual desires, I would encourage them to see other people to fill in the gaps. I enjoy feeling like a predator hunting its prey. I could be sexually submissive now and be sexually dominant another time, either to the same or to another partner. Being part of a group of slaves that serves one master or mistress sounds like a life that would really suit me. I would like it when my partner is completely tied up during sex. Being physically restricted during sex with clothes, robes, chains, etc. is arousing. Honestly, I'm a sucker for these types of things. Like there was probably two to three years where I took every single BuzzFeed quiz that went out. So of course, when creating my new FetLife account, I had to take it again. And not surprisingly, the results were pretty much the same. If you want to know, my top four results are brat, submissive, rope bunny, and masochistic. Mm -hmm. Brats basically means that we are naughty submissives. The definition given by the platform says, Brats find disobedience as a form of playfulness and require a compatible dominant who will not only teach them a lesson, but also accept that any number of lessons might still not necessarily change our behavior. Rope bunnies like to be tied up and restrained using ropes or other attributes like chains, cuffs, spreader bars, etc. Whether that be for sexual enhancement, for art, or just for fun, and that they enjoy being totally at the mercy of their partner. And of course, masochists, which enjoys receiving certain types of pain from their partner, usually in a sexual content. Masochism is independent of pain tolerance. It is purely about the ability to enjoy or get aroused by certain levels of pain. And if you want to see my complete list, you can add me as a friend on FetLife. My username is my actual name, which is Dana Shergal, one word, and I have listed it under writings. But having access to kink-friendly websites is more than just finding friends. It's an important way for the community to share health and safety information without censorship. It is a place where people can share their more vulnerable sides and ask tough or sensitive questions that they can't share in public. It's a place where authenticity thrives and curiosities can be followed. But you still need to manage yourself accordingly. The internet is still the internet. Meeting it too will never be 100% safe. The internet will always have trolls and scammers and catfishers. So don't share your personal information like where you live, personal phone numbers, home or work addresses, or respond to financial aid requests. Remember, there will always be someone waiting to prey on the vulnerable, new, and naive. Also, watch out for phishing scams. Phishing is a form of social engineering or things like email scans where the attackers deceive people in revealing sensitive information. I think the most popular method of this is going through email, but it can be done on social networks as well. And some scammers take their time. So take extra precautions when meeting someone new or talking to someone at all. You also need to understand that not all sites are safe. And this definitely includes BDSM and kink sites. However, if you're looking to try another site that's different than FetLife, I found an article on Dating Top 10 that outlines 10 other websites that they researched and found were suitable. The link will be in the description, but some other websites that are out there are alt.com, 
which is a BDSM dating site that has free options as well as a monthly subscription. There's Adult Friend Finder, which is apparently the world's largest sex and swingers community. There is fuckbook.com, which also has free and cost-based subscription plans. But other ones are like kinkyswipe.com, fester.com, collarspace.com, BDSM and kink, bdsmsingles.com, and thecage.co. But when choosing a website, remember there is no perfect website. So you can try out a few and choose the kinkiest website that suits you and what you're looking for. Even with FetLife, one of my criticisms is how fast people will DM you. But it isn't about the website. It's more or less the people on the website. But if you change your privacy settings, you can stop people from spamming you. It's all about putting in the effort to make your profile work for you, regardless of what site you're on. But when it comes to putting yourself on a kinky website, remember you can always take yourself off and you don't need to do anything permanently. You don't need to share photos of your face if you don't want to. I've seen lots of accounts where it's just random body parts where you couldn't possibly tell who that person is. You can use kinky websites to just explore and learn. You don't need to talk to anyone either if you don't want to. Sites like FetLife are an incredible learning tool because there's tons of groups and educational posts and frank discussions about things you want to know. But just understand that you're probably not going to like or even agree with everything you see or read. Just be respectful about it and don't be a dick because you will get kicked out. But honestly, if you are going to be a dick about it, you deserve to get kicked out. But I wanted to share this because kink deserves a space to be talked about. And there are lots of places to check out. And FetLife is certainly one of them. So again, if you want to check me out on FetLife, it's Dana Shergle, all one word. But just real quick before we wrap up, I just want to say how excited I am actually for this weekend, because this is a weekend that I will be going to Delhi's edition of the Erotic Edge Expanded, which means my weekend is going to be full of erotic films and classes. And the films I'm really looking forward to because they're going to be from all over the world. Um, one, a couple off the top of my head, I know that there's one from Germany, which is about a couple in their seventies and includes SM bondage on a sunny afternoon. There's a film from South Asia on breath play. And there's a film from France where a couple are on vacation who have a very different experience regarding making a movie. Plus there's going to be so, so, so many more because the event is about two and a half days long. And honestly, I'm just excited that I get to experience a kinky event in the capital of India itself, which is pretty amazing considering where we are. But really, this event speaks volumes to the kinky changes that is coming around the world. And no matter how hard someone or some places might try to suppress kink, you will never be able to extinguish it. Because at the end of the day, we're all kinky. But this and this event will be next week's episode. So tune in to hear all about it. And on Monday, I will be bringing on D20 Dom, which is her community name, to have a candid conversation about self-awareness and how to live authentically. She is a professional human behavioral expert, PhD, and alternative lifestyle coach who loves to speak on self-improvement. And I had such a lovely time with her, and I can't wait to share that conversation with you. Her experience certainly shines through, so you're not going to want to miss that either. But that's all I have for today, and I will see you next week with all the kinky updates from the weekend. And as always, stay kinky.